My father wasn't really around much when I was a child. But when he was there, uh, it wasn't really much better. He was kind of an intense alcoholic and uh, it made him a pretty angry person. Um, so he would, uh, you know, beat my mother, uh, my sister, and myself when we were young. So when he left, it was actually, it was much better. After he left, unfortunately, he left with my mom uh, in the boat of being a single mother. And so she would have to drop me off with a babysitter. And uh, unbeknownst to her, uh, that babysitter was a pedophile. Um, and so over the course of when I was four to basically when I was old enough to take care of myself, uh, I was being taken advantage of uh, by the babysitter. The only really way to survive a situation like that was just to kind of detach my brain from my body and uh, to kind of ignore all the feelings that I was feeling at the time. When I turned 16, um, I made an attempt on my own life. But I do remember my mother telling me after that um, to just focus on school and that everything would be better with time. And so it's kind of what I did. I just kind of ignored everything, uh, pushed it under the rug, and uh, just, just try to focus on school as much as possible. A friend of mine told me to uh, take a photography class with them. And so I did. And I, I really started falling in love with the process. And, really started falling in love with the things that I was making, so I just kept at it. You know, I kept my brain occupied on this one thing. And before I knew it, I you know, became a lot better at it. And I was doing great. It was really awesome to see the passion and the interest that I found when I was a 16-year-old uh, finally start to pay off. I, I kind of felt like I was going somewhere. And then three years ago, when I was 25 years old, uh, I made another attempt on my life. And it really kind of caught me off guard and it really confused me because, you know, at that time I was a really active commercial photographer in Kansas City, I had a great job, I was in a loving relationship at the time. And, uh, you know, I was really, really good at work and uh, I, you know, I really kind of hated my life and like coming home was the hard part. Going to work was easy. And that's uh, when I realized I started to need to start feeling some feelings, essentially feeling what was inside. After that second attempt, I started going to therapy, started trying to figure some things out, and then I came to the realization that I didn't really know how to process all of my emotions. I kind of just ignored them uh, up to this point. You know, I couldn't tell if I was hungry, I couldn't tell if I was stressed, I couldn't tell if I was sad. All I knew was what was in front of me and uh, to hammer out all these tasks, you know, because the task at hand was much more alive than than I was at that point. So I knew I needed to figure out this thing called emotions and I didn't know how to grasp that, but I did understand that up to this point, the only thing I really knew was I was a good photographer. So I started bringing around a little point and shoot camera with me. Anytime I felt what I thought was an emotion or something that happened internally, um, I would make an image. Unfortunately, with the immediacy of digital photography, I would look at the back of my camera and I would start nitpicking these weird details that had nothing to do with my emotions and only things that had to do with the image. And that's when I decided to switch to film, where you know I would feel something inside, make an image, and that's all I needed to do. Like, I couldn't see the photo. 
and I, it felt more appropriate because I, I didn't really know what I was feeling to begin with. So I kind of needed that delay in time to kind of figure out what was going on. So just kind of using film as a way to journal these emotions that I was still trying to figure out on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it be my friends, my families, or even just these quiet moments by myself, whether I was upset or happy. The fact that I couldn't see what I was making was kind of appropriate because I didn't really understand what was going on internally. After I'd finish a role, it was just like I would care for essentially what would be my memories and my emotions. And uh, developing the film at home just kind of helped extend this idea that I was taking care of more than just pictures. You know, I was taking care of my emotions, I was taking care of these thoughts, these memories, these points in time. And it wasn't until I developed some film that I would look at them and, and realize there was a lot more going on in my head than I thought. I would truly feel like, you know, I was staring at some memories rather than just, you know, some pixels on a screen. These photographs kind of serve as a translation. And what it's trying to translate is a process of simply being human in that I saw something and it made me feel strongly enough that I would pick up a camera and push a button and capture what moved me in the first place and it wasn't until weeks later that I realized the significance of that internal movement what made me feel to begin with and so trying to translate that process of just simply feeling simply being alive simply being here simply participating in this thing that I've recently to come to understand as my own life that I wasn't aware that I was so significant in I suppose. I never really grew up to understand my emotions, let alone talk about them, and photography gave me an outlet to express these things that I did not know how to express. It allows me to come full circle and to truly face things that, that do scare me, or to really take the time to acknowledge the things that do make me happy, you know, so um, I don't think it'll ever stop.